but everything else is done. Uh, the coolant's been bled because you lose a little bit of coolant when you're undoing the uh, coolant lines. So that's uh, that's done. Nothing's leaking. There's a small leak from the feed line, and I fixed it up. I just didn't like the uh, extra long feed line, but that's what they give you. So basically, everything's bolted down. And then when I was about to put the car on the dyno, the guard, just keep it in mind, the dyno hasn't been used for like about two to three months now. So the reason why we don't use it because it's just extra cold. Today is like 50 degrees out. A perfect day. Tomorrow is going to be a little bit chillier. So uh, as soon as I start up the computer, it just started bugging out. It's going like beep, 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 beep. And it happened before. I was kind of freaking out because like I had to buy another desktop. So I even emailed the uh, customer just let, giving him a heads up that my computer is actually bugging out. And you know, I'm just trying to finish this car by deadline, which is tomorrow, uh, by coming out here on Sunday, even later today. Anyway, I had to just open up the desktop cover, shot some air, and it's working again. So, like, you know, knock on woods. Hopefully, this just keeps on working. So, what I'll do today is just gonna maybe do some partial. Uh, maybe I'll finish it up. I don't know. Depends. But I just want to kind of. Do the uh, partial throttle injector scaling all day on the dyno and do maybe full throttles tomorrow. All right, so just double check with the leaks and set up the car on the dyno. Just did the, uh, just swap out the injectors. So now it's gonna be on ditch works or douchey works or DW, whatever you wanna call. 750 injectors. Now I have my base map for 750. And I'm gonna just custom them from here. So yeah, just been doing a few pulls here and there. Um, just going for the air fuel ratio for now. It's only at like 10 pounds the most, and it actually tapers down a lot. Actually, this turbo actually spools up really quick, being a twin scroll. I thought it was gonna be like really laggy, but it actually comes in really quick. The full spool like is about 3,700, but it kicks in earlier, like down here already I thought like about that size turbo like usually goes like what? right uh, but this thing is actually pretty good on the spool up so kind of impressed on like five six hundred dollar turbo um, but um, <clears throat> yeah I'll probably have to change the um, preload on the turbo so that it could kind of hold a little bit more at the top that's more of a preload here because um, I don't want this thing to taper down like that Though that's how you usually set up. I'm gonna actually make it a little bit more tighter so the wastegate doesn't open up as much at the top. Um, so yeah, I mean right now the uh, number is not that impressive, but once it sees about 14 pounds, I think it'll be at around 250 on our dyno, which probably is about like 280. If he adds math, maybe you know we could shoot for like 18, 20 pounds, easy 350 um, at the wheels. So. Yeah, I'm gonna just stop here, uh, contact the owner, because uh, I think it's gonna take time to cool down. It's already eight o'clock, and you know, I didn't really anticipate it. And also, <clears throat> the computer's still acting up, so I had to do the same thing to the desktop. So I'm just gonna shut it off, and tomorrow I'm gonna come in, have Jake to just clean up in and out, um, so no more dust actually goes in, because it looks like it has something to do with the dust. Especially after you know sending down the cars in the in the shop and everything didn't probably help. So I'm just gonna stop here because the owner said it was okay to get the car one day later. So I'd rather just make sure the car um, is good and when it's handed over, it's you know it's the power where the uh, owner was looking for. I don't mind just spending another day to just get it done right. If anybody's actually looking for this turbo kit, make sure to um, upgrade all the uh, gaskets, like the Grim Speed or something, because the ones that they include are just junk. And ones that actually came with, <clears throat> everything was all like bent and everything, so he, he couldn't even use it anyway. So like this one. So make sure to get some uh, good gaskets from Grim Speed. 
and also if they don't include make sure to get those hardwares like the the bolts or studs I had to run out and get the um, like extra bolts and studs like this it had it to be like a little bit shorter than this make sure you get some heat shield um, I'm probably going to have the heat shield or heat tape made for this it's definitely this hose is going to melt right on top of the, uh, the manifold or I got to bend this one so as the coolant lines are a little bit close so that's another thing I'm going to suggest the uh, owner so whoever's looking for this kit um, I'll, I'll give like 8 out of 10 pretty good decent kit um, good spool ups and um, I don't know about the power but you know because you know we haven't really tuned it yet It's like 320, <clears throat> so you apply 3, I mean 291, let's just say 13 percent, yeah, like 330 almost. And we didn't even do the pull all the way up to 6800, but now I've got a lower deep boost because you know it's just too much. Yeah, if it had a meth kit, maybe I'll add it more. Like, I, I could stay at 19, but I think it'll be safe at like 17. Yeah. So yeah, we'll probably walk away with like 320-ish. And that's really the most you could do with the VK1. Yeah. Without the yeah. kit. So but the prop like the you could kind of tell <clears throat> when we're doing the pull, it's like long because mm -hmm. it's loaded. Yeah. If you were to do this on the Dynajet, the pull's done like in maybe less than 10 seconds. Oh really? Yeah. It was like uh <clears throat> 12 seconds. So if you were to do this on the Dynajet, yeah, maybe like eight seconds. It's not a lot longer. <laughs> Oh yeah, because it's yeah. loaded. The car's actually loading up. Uh -huh. and so this is actually like a true number. Yeah. Um, what they say, but.
finally got the custom tune done. It's about 6.30. We're actually expecting another snow tomorrow, so we're just taking this opportunity to just clean up the whole shop. Um, have to just kind of clean up this area, especially after having some incident with the, um, the computer. Jake got me this um, iced coffee, but it tastes like uh, freaking french fries. So it doesn't make sense french fries taste on the iced coffee so Jake stopped drinking too he just realized that that's full the car put down a decent number we're not looking for something crazy numbers and still on the Mustang Dino so he's still making about 310 320 at the wheels the turbo actually spools up pretty quick and um, it was making decent numbers so I'm kind of impressed with how that performed but <clears throat> to me I mean, extra manifold and all the extra costs uh, wasn't really necessary for to have just some uh, bottom mount turbo. So that's just my opinion. You could actually go with the Tomei, pretty much make the similar um, power or whatnot. But for aesthetic purposes, I think maybe that's a good, um, like, you know, engine bay wise, whatever, just to show. So we decided to stay another hour and what we did was Jake did all the seam seal uh, under under the heat shield put the heat shield back on everything lines up like everything lines up here and just adding more seam seal here and it was actually missing big chunk here and I just walled it up here put the um, under coating so the exhaust is all put together and now it's lined up clean. Because when we first got it, exhaust was like that tip was in there, like, uh -huh. right? And that was like up there. And maybe we'll lower the car. We got put some the time to put the bumper on just to see. But I'm missing the big chunk of the wirings here. They just ripped it off, chopped it off. So, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, looking great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got like three different colors, but looking great. So yeah, I don't know if they gonna say something about this, but, um, and this part is a little lifted up cause I think this hood was already bent. So, but this is the only hood I have for the BK2. Oh, look at this, like, you know, I get amused. How, how how it came out so good. Great! You gotta throw a picture of what it looked like before, right when you do this. I know, but <laughs> like, only thing is I just didn't have the good picture taken. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I, follow, I filmed it with the GoPro, so it's like, like fish eyes. So, yeah. You know, it doesn't you really do justify, it yeah. Cause this thing, literally this exhaust was in there. I think this? Yeah. Here. Yeah, it was like yeah, we were able to see that, and then obviously it was like everything was mangled up, tail it was missing, the trunk was like lifted up, like. And along here, it used to go like this. Yeah, yeah, and it was like all wrinkled. And at one point, we tried to like straighten it out, hook it up to the dyno, <laughs> strap it. Like I mean, worked for a bit, and I'm like, this is not going anywhere. Just waiting for the strap to fly off and hit us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, get out of the <laughs> uh, Still out of shape. Oh, how was your nap down there? Yeah, good. good. <laughs> and I just, just feel I actually covered my bald head. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Hey. Hey. Yeah. It's gonna go back to 14.5 because um, it's just first time actually just it's elevating now. Yeah. First time. So. Yeah, Everything works now. Car sounds like a lot less violent now. Yeah, it does. It's a lot quieter, uh, daily driver level. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was so perfect. Alright, so it's like 9 10. Jake just took off. So basically, the car is ready to be handed over. The customer is picking up at uh, 10 o'clock. It snowed today, so. Kind of worked out, but it was like freezing up here because we had to constantly like move the cars and open the gate back and forth. So just to recap, what I did is, and I was just uh, in there to um, install one of the AEM wideband gauge right there on the right, and it was just hard to go through the whole thing, and you know, no wires tangling, nothing, just nice and clean. Um, he already had two more gauges, so like. It was really tight there to, you know, feed all the wires in, but, you know, got it done. Um, clean stall, everything's just hidden. Um, so, yeah, just to recap what I did, uh, I actually uh, transferred this uh, blow valve, used that flange and just cut it and just cleaned it up and uh, got the Synapse blow valve installed over here. Uh, ESR Evo 9 or 8 kit here installed and then O2 housing uh, 750 DW injectors installed as well custom tuned uh, wide band installed and uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with how it came out and hopefully the customer goes for the uh, test drive tomorrow and he'll feel all this power that gained from this side uh, install and uh, custom tune. So yeah, just wanted to close out the video by just recapping some stuff here. Um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.